So now that we've covered the basics associated with the excretory system and excretion as a whole, we can now look at the actual physiology, the actual function, and the specific steps and processes necessary to complete this idea of excretion. So in order to understand that, we'll entitle this next flowchart as excretion overview. What we're going to be looking at are the detailed specific steps associated with this process of excretion. And there are going to be four major steps that we're going to walk through and understand. As we're going through this, make sure you're looking at figure 44.8. That does a really good job of visually emphasizing these four steps to help you really understand what each of them is going to do in this overall pathway of excretion. So we need to understand first with excretion, what happens is this idea of many animals and we'll write this down. Many animals produce urine, okay? And this is the first time we're using that word here, produce urine. We've used urea, uric acid, very close, uh, you know, precursors, but we're going to really understand this idea of producing urine in just a second. Many animals produce urine to dispose, to get rid of uh, nitrogenous waste. I'll just write N waste for short. This is our big overarching goal. And also to maintain, okay, to maintain a fluid balance slash composition. We want to make sure that internal osmolarity is whatever it may be, fluid balance slash composition. We want the solutes to be whatever level they're supposed to be. We want the whatever is extra to be excreted out, whatever is waste to be excreted out, etc., etc. So this is the idea of excretion. Many animals produce urine to dispose and waste and maintain fluid balance and composition. How is now the question? That's our big question. How do they do this? They use four steps that we'll walk through starting now. Number one, the first and foremost step is known as filtration. Okay. Filtration. Filtration is when we have the body fluid, because remember the internal body environment is mainly composed of fluid, right? So body fluid is going to contact, contacts, body fluid contacts, what's known as a selectively permeable and we remember from bio one what that means, right? Selectively permeable. Selectively permeable means some things pass, some things don't. Some things get through, some things don't. So the body fluid, which contains things, okay, they contact this selectively permeable membrane, and that's specifically going to be of a, a step or structure known as the transport epithelium. That's a term to know here. So the transport epithelium is going to have a selectively permeable membrane that comes in contact with body fluid. To give you a little bit of a better understanding of what this transport epithelium is, TE for short, just know that it is a very specialized, that means it has a really important structure and function, a very specialized and differentiated structure and function, uh, tissue, okay, so it's a collection of cells, uh, with one or more layers of cells, with one plus one or more layers of cells. That's what transport epithelium is. And each of those one or more layers of cells has that selectively permeable membrane that's going to be deciding to keep things in or take things out, whatever it may be. Now, this idea of the transport epithelium is important because what happens here overall is that this moves specific specific solute particles so those are the particles that are dissolved within a solvent right it moves specific solute particles in what are considered specific directions in other words some things stay within the body some things are going to leave the body those are the specific directions and the specific solutes are going to be uh, chosen here at this transport epithelium structure in this overall process known as filtration. Right? You all know what filtration is. Some things get filtered out, some things don't get filtered out. That's the idea here with the transport epithelium. Move specific solute poly particles in specific directions. What are the specific directions that can be you know, done here? When we are talking about these specific directions, we're basically saying that things like cells, uh, mainly proteins and large molecules 
Do you think these should leave or stay within the internal environment? Cells, proteins, and large molecules. These are probably not going to leave. They're not going to pass this selectively permeable membrane. And because they don't pass through, they stay in the body. They stay in body. They do not pass the selectively permeable membrane. What's more interesting to us in excretion, specifically filtration, is what does get filtered? What is going to be released? What is going to be released is water plus the dissolved small particles, right? Those small solutes that are dissolved within water. And we've actually talked about those small solutes before. These are things like salts, sugars, amino acids, and also nitrogenous waste. Those are some classic small solutes that will combine with water to cross that transport epithelium. That means they will get filtered out, right? They are going to be filtered out of the body. In other words, these or these uh, molecules, water and the small solute, uh, forms what's known as a filtrate. That's a good term to know. So once you've done filtration, you've formed a filtrate. This is basically solute collection, in other words. This is the collection of solutes that will be excreted out. The thing is, and I want to write this over here, there's actually a bit of a problem right now. Okay, There's a bit of a problem, and I, I will solve it, but here's the problem. The problem is that filtration as a whole, this first step, filtration is not truly very selective. Is not very selective. Okay, It sometimes doesn't get everything that it's supposed to, in other words. Some, and also what happens is uh, it gets things that it's not supposed to. Sometimes these cells, proteins, large molecules do pass through. And these are valuable materials. Uh, and we can sort of say that some valuable, and that's the only term I can think of that really works here, some valuable materials end up within the filtrate. Materials end up here. And here is within the filtrate. And the filtrate is supposed to leave. It's supposed to get out of the body. So we got to figure out, wait, we can't let these guys go. These are valuable materials. So we have to do something else. That's where step two comes in. We got to save these valuable materials. That's known as a process. Uh, that's known as the process of reabsorption. What are we going to do? Valuable materials are leaving. We're going to reabsorb them back into the internal body environment. In other words, we can just say that reabsorption as step two of excretion is the return of what I would consider useful, useful substances. Definitely not nitrogenous wastes, right? Not, definitely not anything that we just want to get rid of. Like cells, proteins, large molecules that like we really want to keep, we return them. These return of useful substances from filtrate, that's where they were filtered out, right? We want to get them out of there from filtrate and back into the internal body environment. Specifically, it's actually going to go right back into the blood. So that's our reabsorption step, returning those useful uh, substances. So problem solved. Nice. So that's one and two. We have two more steps to cover. Uh, once we've done reabsorption, we can continue this process now of, of getting stuff out, right? We, we've saved what's good, and that's going to be now step three known as secretion. Secretion is going to be another extracting step, another step where we're taking things out of the body. Uh, it's an emphasized step because this is going to extract toxins. Do we want to keep these within the body? Of course not, right? We want to get them out. Extract toxins plus, plus excess ions. So excess, right? We don't need to keep these. Excess ions uh, also from the blood. Okay, sometimes we miss stuff. We get the excess, the toxins and the excess ions from the blood, uh, and we're going to put them into the urine, okay, because the urine will be excreted out. This process is actually interesting because uh, it's a necessary step that's actually active transport. It's actually going to cost some metabolic energy, uh, and because of that, uh, we're basically ensuring that anything that didn't cross, or that was supposed to, anything that didn't cross, uh, through fertilization, uh, not fertilization, through filtration, excuse me. Anything that didn't cross through filtration is definitely going to be, uh, definitely going to be extracted in this process, okay? Anything that didn't cross filtration, active transport will make sure that it's definitely extracted into urine. 
Now we finally can conclude and say step four. Step four is a really famous process, happens almost every day. Uh, it's the completion and culmination known as excretion step four. Step four is simply release, right? Excretion is the release of a highly processed filtrate, right? We did a lot to make sure that that filtrate contains what it's supposed to and doesn't contain whatever it's not supposed to. Release of processed filtrate from the body from the body as that urine fluid. And those are our four overarching steps to excretion. What we're going to do in the next video is look a little bit more, because this was all physiology, all function. Now we gotta look at and contextualize where does the anatomy of the body play a role in steps one through four.